time ago in a galaxy far far away we present pack naked at night <laughs> take it away larry darrett all right so uh our uh tech segment is entitled pf sense for pen testers so darren and i work out of the the same office and it's just, it's just the two of us in the office um, we're behind <clears throat> a nice little red Socrus box, much like Paul and, and uh, Mike illustrated. <coughs> excuse me for uh, for building a nice little firewall wireless access point for your home um, with the totally rocking PF Sense. We, we use it day in day out for home, you know, work, you name it, and we love it. Um, and after sort of using it day in day out, uh, we found that it's got some totally awesome stuff, but it's also got some total crap too. And we've found ways around the total crap by configuring it properly. So this is sort of our adventure with, with PFSense to, to make it. Um, we actually have what will become my new PFSense box sitting underneath the table here that we're going to demo to you guys. Um, and uh, we'll, we've got a fresh install of PFSense on it. Okay. So, you know, the, we, we love the little Socrus box that we've built under advice from Paul and all this type of stuff. The problem is, is the box just doesn't have the horsepower to stand up to two guys sitting behind that on that, um, two people running a pen test at the same time. I've got more bandwidth than I know what to do with. The box just can't keep up with what we're throwing through it. So um, we need to do some proper configuration. Um, and even at that, on the small surface box, we're having issues getting it to stand up as well. So we're going to install it on a, quote, real PC, uh, which is one that uh, we uh, happen to actually pull from the trash. And I actually don't know what it is. It's uh, some sort of 64-bit AMD system with, I think, 2 gigs of RAM. Um, and it was uh, destined to the trash, so we rescued it. It's interesting how something destined for the trash can be faster than something that is embedded. Yes. So, uh, total cost, free. And quite honestly, it's probably way more horses than we need for this, um, but it's what we've got. So, uh, first one, go and download and burn a copy of uh, PFSense 2.01 from uh, pfsense.org forward slash downloads. Um, and I know, burn a CD, a retro. Um, it is retro. <laughs> yeah, we didn't do the USB thumb drive install because who knows what you're going to pull out of the dumpster, right? You didn't want to burn 1,500 floppies? Yeah, no, not 15 or floppies. Or USB thumb drive. And yeah. Try to figure, mate. We didn't even know if this machine was... We could was boot it over the network. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we booted it to CD, and oh, I actually almost wasted DVDs on it because I couldn't find the CDs instead. Yeah, whatever. In any case, so boot from the CD and accept the default boot options. Okay, We're not going to show you this part. We're going to do some, some screencast. But you know what? Going through the text-based installer is really boring. doesn't make for good TV because it sits there and waits for about 10 or 15 minutes while it's doing the install. Mm. And there goes our tech set. <laughs> All right. So, um, great. On boot, it's going to ask you to assign some interfaces for the WAN and LAN. Uh, in our case, uh, it wouldn't detect uh, that the interfaces were up and we, we couldn't do the auto-detect. So the way we cheated was we just observed the console and it kept spitting out all these interfaces were down. And we plugged one in that we wanted to be the WAN and it said, hey, it's up. So guess what? That HFE0 is now our, our WAN. Um, and then SF0 was now our LAN. Um, great. Uh, no big deal there. Um, great. Once we've done that, it configures, uh, finishes configuring and boots, boots into the, the CD-ROM from the PFSense menu. From the menu, we're going to do the install to hard drive with option 99. And uh, we're going to not do the custom install, just the default options. And uh, wait and wait and <coughs> wait and reboot. So we've done this part already. This is the crappy for TV part. Um, now once we've rebooted, it's time to continue to go into the shell and change your root password. Yay. So you, you boot back up, you get the shell, you hit... Uh, Darren, do you remember what option that was off the menu? 
8 shell, because uh, you're looking at that awesome. That can be a lot of um, go to shell, PASSWD is going to change your password for root. Good. Then exit. Uh, enable uh, SSH. Um, uh, and then we can exit. Um, oh, we set our interfaces, uh, IP addresses for our interfaces here as well. We can also do that with two. Uh, we can also set IP addresses with that option three, right, Darren? On the menu? Uh, set, inter set interface IP addresses. Yep, with number two. Okay. Um, set the LAN for a DHCP. Set our external for static. We've got all sorts of various configuration here for, for doing all sorts of good stuff. Um, so we've, we've got it working. Great. Um, now uh, off to the web configurator. So uh, we're done with the box. We can unplug our keyboards and put it in our rack, and it will come up and go when it's finally booted and all that good stuff. Happy noises. Um, and now we'll go log into the default web console with admin pfSense, which we have, and hopefully Dave has showed us. If we've got the screen up. We've already logged in with admin and pfSense. Okay. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is change our password. Uh, it can be found under Darren System User Management User Manager, and then click the nice little box with the E for Edit for the admin user, and we'll put in a new password. We'll make this password just for now, so that just because so we can have a different password. And save. Don't forget to save. All right, next step is uh, we're going to turn HTTPS on for the web interface under System Advanced and Web Configurator Protocol, HTTP or HTTPS. Let's pick HTTPS and let's just use the default certificate, which will, of course, be bogus because we don't have any other certificates added right now. Scroll down the bottom and hit Save, and it's going to automatically redirect us and give us notices about bogus certificates and all that good stuff. Now... The smart thing to have done would probably have been done the HTTPS first and then change the password so we weren't changing the password in clear text. That's your choice. We chose to do it this way. We're standalone on a network. Okay. So, uh, Darren, we'll wait until you're, uh, you're ready back to HTTPS. We understand the risks. Thank you, Firefox. Uh, John Strand says I have an outfit like that. So, we'll confirm and we're logged back. <coughs> Great. So, next up, my personal favorite, some creature conveniences, some, some creature comforts, as it were. So, me, I like having PFSense hand out DHCP addresses to all the LAN clients, and uh, so, you know, hand one out to a server and then convert that to a statically assigned address for servers and such, so I don't have to worry about trying to configure them. They're always going to get the same one. But by default, it does not add the DHCP host name into the local resolver, so it's going to put, 127, or it's going to put the, the local system in for our local resolver, in uh, not remember, uh, and, and so we're not going to know who all these names are. I mean, who can remember all these numbers? 192, 168, 1 dot, and I've got like 30 machines at home and VMs and, you know, forget it. But I can remember host names because they named them sort of what they do, right? So let's enable the adding of the host to the local resolver under services. Uh, DH, oh, sorry, DNS forwarder. And check register leases in DNS forwarder and register DHCP static mappings in DNS forwarder. So that will do all of our dynamic DNS as by clients and all of our uh, local stuff. And then save that off. So now anything that gets registered with DHCP will uh, get included in our DNS forwarder and we can reference stuff on our local network by name. Okay, so creature convenience. So another one that may be considered a creature comfort for a home network, or maybe not in our network, is uh, a freaking DMZ. Yeah, in this box we're configuring today, it has a whopping five interfaces. Um, because uh, rescued from the parts bin uh, was an older Intel 4-port Ethernet adapter, um, which also means that the hardware support under PFSense also rules. Uh, but, you know, why this is a hack naked at night see, uh, section a little bit is we had to do some hardware modifications uh, because in order to get this card to fit, we had to bust out the Dremel and cut one of the uh, aluminum heat sinks in half so that massive card would fit into this fairly small machine. I don't know what the heat sink was for, but we'll find out when it overheats. Right? 
So uh, half size uh, heat sink on this box um, so that the card would fit. If not, we were going to uh, end up with lots of uh, zaps in, in any case. Um, so we want to add another uh, interface. So it's fairly easy to do. So under interfaces, assign, we can now add another interface with a nice little plus box. And it's going to create an opt one. And we can pick one of our other unsigned interfaces. So yeah, sure. We already use an FF0, so let's use SF1 um, and save it. Okay. So then after there, let's go into interfaces. Back up top there. Interfaces, opt one. Enable it. And now we can rename it to something appropriate like DMZ. What am I putting you guys to sleep? No, Josh is sleeping. Oh, okay. He's had too many cigars and beer, too much beer. I was going to say, he needs to drink. <laughs> He's sitting next to the couch. <laughs> okay, so now, of course, we can, uh, you know, we add our static addresses <laughs> if we want to. You all right there, buddy? Good. Don't inhale your cigars. Just, just a little, a little tip. tip. You just put the tip in, right? Yeah. So, yeah, great. You know, do no big, no big deal. You get, you get an idea. You know, give it an yeah. address. Great. Um. Uh, no big deal. We can add addresses. Good, good. And let's save it up. Hey, look at that. We've got a DMZ interface. Because you know what? This is where we put, like, our beef server and all that good stuff. Okay. Great. So now we've got our DMZ. We can put a beef server in. We can put some web servers and all that good stuff. Great. Apply those changes, Darren. What the hell? All right. So the other one is the single most important option that I found for configuring PFSense for pen testing is the firewall max state table. So the default on my Socrus box was something around 400 states, which is you take Nessus and run a way low, low and low Nessus scan on a class C, and it topples the box. So you put it even way low and lower, like maximum 20 connections for like two IPs, and it keeps the box up. And guess what? It takes you all weekend to run the tests. So uh, not necessarily uh, a great idea. So um, one of the things that I like to do is we crank up the sessions um, and great. So on the Socrus box, uh, we cranked it up to 190,000 states. Uh, but the device tips over half the time depending on how large of an IP range and even with the slow and slow. This time not running out on states, but the more you increase the state table, the more RAT, RAM and CPU it uses which is why we're now moving to, quote, real hardware. Um, so what uh, we can do on this one is um, set the max state on this machine to 750,000 states. And, uh, Darren, we do that in, uh, of course, I didn't make notes for that. It is in firewall, I believe, uh, NAT. Nope. All right. Interfaces. Uh, system. I'm sorry. System advanced. Uh, oh, yes. Under the firewall NAT tab, firewall maximum states. And uh, we're going to crank this up to 750,000. Which, interestingly enough, PFSense it detects the capabilities of your box uh, and will uh, change those states, what it thinks to be accordingly. So 400 states for the Socrus box, 192,000 by default out of the box for, for this hardware we're actually using. Okay. So awesome. Great. We've got a box. We've got a box that we can allegedly scan from behind and allegedly have two testers scanned from behind at the same time. But now we want to make sure all of our Metasploit shells connect back to us, right? Well, we're behind that. So we should probably set a rule for that, you know, one rule to rule them all. And if I recall, that is under firewall, uh, NAT. And the one-to-one uh, -one tab, okay? So we can add a new one uh, and go through that, you know, give it the external high, uh, subnet, blah, 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 so forth and so on. It's configuring firewall rules. I'm sure you guys can figure that out. Um, for me, it's probably NAT one-to-one -one because what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go back in and sign a bunch of uh, virtual IPs to the interface because uh, I have five IPs at home, so I can do all sorts of multiple fun things and run multiple web servers on port 80 depending on what... Uh, I want to send folks to and all that good stuff. So you can either do it under uh, firewall NAT one to one or firewall port forwarding rules, and we, you know we'll let you figure that out depending on your setup. 
Um, and you know, we could spend all day discussing creating firewall rules for all the various states. So um, we'll leave that uh, up to uh, an exercise left. So you know, the sort of those are some of the the tics, trips and tricks and tips that we've learned from uh, using PFSense on a Soakers box. Almost, and, and almost said tits. Tits, 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 and tip, tits and tips. Wait, you were a minute, little tongue tied. Yeah, little tits and tips. That's a different kind of place. Uh, until later. Um, Steve yes, place. Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. So, uh, yep. That's a uh, you know. So with that, go forth, hack naked, and uh, keep an eye on your state tables uh, right from the uh, main PFSense screen and one on your state CPU and memory usage. Fantastic. Um, do you want to do the hacker car after the pen test panel? When is the pen test panel? Um, right in like five minutes. Yeah, we'll do it afterwards. That's okay. Fine. Okay. Let's do that. We'll do that. And <laughs> oh close. wait, wait. Oh, we got one more little quick thing here. Ready? Go. What are you doing? Ah, oh, fail. Ah, oh, well. Did you have some audio? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Nice. Oh. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> awesome stuff. Uh, with that, we'll take a short break. We'll come back, and we're going to get set up for... The pen test panel, and then after that, we're going to do two more tech segments. So Woo-hoo! stay tuned. Donate to Breast Cancer Research, paul.com.com forward slash 300. So that means we're going to go longer than 6 o'clock. Uh, yes. For your, your pussy pleasure. Yes. Yes.